Hey everybody, welcome to Talk Daily. Today we're going to be talking about an article that comes to us from Car and Driver and written by Azara Dyer. Um, I always go on this uh, link, Car and Driver, Motor Trend. They always have amazing articles and they talk about cars, so it's very interesting. Anyway, I'll try to summarize it for you. So, uh, in short, this is about a 2023 Subaru Solterra. Uh, it says EV meets ORV on-road vehicle. Anyways, uh, what's the gist of it? Okay, so what's special about this? Um, I'm bringing it... Okay, before I tell you my opinion, let's just tell you the facts. Here's the facts. An on-road, off-road vehicle. There are going to be two versions. There's going to be the Toyota version, uh, BZ4X. And that's the Toyota version. It's going to be front-wheel drive. And then you're going to have the Subaru version, which is the Solterra. Solterra. So um, the BZ4X offered lesser front-wheel drive drive variant. That's the Toyota version. So it's probably give you more MPG. Uh, I think Toyota did it be, be smart because of that. Uh, so anyway, it has 8.3 inch of ground clearance and decent approach and departure uh, departure angle, meaning that you see the front of the car basically you know going on road and off road. That's yeah, it's not an airplane, okay? Um, so it is just talking about its ability to do stuff, uh, go out in the desert. Um, it has it gets you a dual function X mode system to tailor its power delivery situation um 218 horsepower and 249 out for pound of torque from a dual motor engine good for clean with 60 miles per hour and 6.5 seconds so it's kind of like an outback okay uh they put the word uh, wrx i don't know why they're doing so here's a picture i'll show a couple of photos of it here it's doing this thing uh, climbing around in the desert um they're showing it a ground clearance uh again it looks nice it, I mean, I don't know how many owners are going to go uh, off-road with this vehicle, but again, it's an option. Um, I'm not sure what's going on over here. I think it's just demonstrating the fact that it can put the foot down on the gas. Um, this is in California, obviously. You can see the California it's a dealer license plate. They said they're doing, they were testing this in Arizona. Um, okay, a lot of pictures, different colors, different looks. I mean, I think it's kind of clever. Don't don't forget the battery is uh, water cooled. Okay, so um, it's a water cooled battery, lithium ion battery, water cooled battery, seventy something, seventy six watts of uh, uh, capacity. Um, again, just random picture we're going off. They're showing you the all wheel drive. You could obviously tell the power is being channeled. Well, what's supposed to happen is that we're not supposed to be moving, and this was supposed to be moving, but uh direct drive here's the thing about all-wheel drive i've always been mentioning this on my channel i am very picky about all-wheel drive now because i'm just the owner of an evo which i replaced three differentials um the fact of the matter when you buy an all-wheel drive car most likely you're getting a open differential and open differential and some kind of a viscous coupling in the center you don't really get all-wheel drive is very expensive the differential is required because with all the technology out there in the world, you still need a mechanical unit to deliver power unless you have an electric motor on every wheel and it does its own thing like the NSX. Um, in reality, what you have is some kind of a... Like, well, obviously this thing's spinning too fast. It's not supposed to happen. Like, am I evil? They would not would not be in this mode. Uh, you'll see dust coming out from this wheel because that's the wheel that has traction. Power immediately goes to that wheel. What happens to clutch type? It's it's if this is spinning that fast, that one would be spinning just as fast, just like an off-road vehicle, right? Like a locking diff. Except the front of my Evo, the front is a, a quafy unit, so basically like a sundial gear. Long story short, it it allows some slippage. Okay. Anyways, um, looking at this, I okay, I don't want to bring my opinion yet. I'll tell you my opinion in the end. But okay, so anyways, moving on, doing its thing, being happy. Obviously, it didn't get stuck and made it up the hill at some at some point right uh and that's what i think it's gonna be at most likely on the road and that's why toyota made it front wheel drive for the mpg again i'm adding my opinion again so um here's the interior looks nice uh the big screen which is nice it's um it looks like it's just easily accessible again your music your phone and navigation and use i guess it's like an uh, iphone uh, this is the apple carplay um I'll tell you my opinion later, but I think it's more of a distracting, distracting. but hey, I guess it looks nice. Uh, it's not as bad as like the Tacoma when you have the, you know, the giant slab in the middle, but it's, again, it's very, it's nice. I don't see any issues with it. Um, this telescoping thingy is not that pleasant to the eye, but again, it's, uh, it's, it's a nice uh, place to be in. Um, the trunk, the front of the nose, it very looks Toyota-esque. Uh, I mean, 
a lot of cars like to look the same. That's obviously Subaru, 100% Subaru EV. It's, it's, it's a nice car. So, okay, let's go back to the details. Again, that's the interior. So um, they're saying that, that it's going to be a, for a very specific audience. So they're only building 6,500 solteras for 2023. Sorry for making it sound Spanish, but that's a soltera. That's a, that's a Spanish name. Uh, Subaru shouldn't have any problem selling this year production, but whatever they can uh, subsequently ramp up volume will depend a lot on the pricing, which has yet to be announced an estimated 40 grand or so. And eligible for seven thousand five hundred dollar tax credit, the Soltera makes a strong case for itself at a higher price point. Anyway, so specification. So now, what I'm gonna add to you, what I think, and here it is: um, vehicle type, front and rear motor, all-wheel drive, five passenger, four door wagon, and front motor, permanent magnet, one hundred seventy five horsepower, one twenty five torque. What? That's a very weak engine. Am I the only one looking at it going like, what? Why are we doing like, this is like a gasoline power engine? What do you mean 218 horsepower and 250? This is an electric motor. Can somebody explain to me how do you make so much lo little power out of these motors? What are very tiny little motors? And and that's, what do you, what you guys are doing? What, what, what are you doing, Subaru, um, Toyota? I'm very confused by that. Um, battery pack, 72.8 kilo per hour gross. Onboard charger, 6.6 kilowatt. I, what, what? I'm so confused by this. And the curb weight, 4,400 pounds, 4,500 pounds. Hey, man, Mac, make it 5,000 pounds and give me some power. Why is it so slow? I'm almost shocked. It's, okay, you're making us sacrifice the gasoline engine for the electric engine, but then you give me that measly, unacceptable... Dude, this an electric engine. If anything, it gives you a bunch amount of torque. So at this point, I'm looking at Tesla and saying, maybe that's why I should buy Tesla, because this is not acceptable. Sorry. I love this car, but I cannot recommend it to anybody. This is pathetic. Okay, what, what is this? Like, I can't even... What am I supposed to do? Go to AutoZone, get an air intake, and get some more power? I can't do anything with this. What, what, what is this? This is not... This is still weak. So, to me, at that point... Nope, I do not recommend this. This is stupid. No, man. No, you're not, you're not going to... $40,000? What are you doing? This electric motor. I, I, what is it like? You don't want to put more magnets in the motor? You don't have a good electric motor? Okay, then figure it out. Give us a better electric motor, which is not acceptable. This car should have a lot more torque, a lot more horsepower. This is, no. You should have the option of reducing your output to get more range. But, again, if you understand, if you if you agree with me, don't agree with me, it's fine. Let me know in the comments below. I mean, seriously, it's just not acceptable. I'm not saying make it a demon machine, but when everyone else gives you a lot of power and you're seeing this car, like, so that's what's going to happen. And we all going to drive electric cars and we're going to be slow? This slow? No. No, 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 no. Um, and another point that I have, what the heck is this range? Are you guys, are you kidding me? What is this, 222 mile? Come on, forget the 22. It's so I have 200 miles. That's nothing. That's nothing. 200 miles? And it takes, um, what did they say? Like they're saying 56 to get 80%. So 56 minutes to get 80% charge estimated what they say. And, you know, leave it obviously overnight to fully charge. But bro, for real, my combined highway, 102, 104 range. I, and this is not acceptable. That range is not acceptable. I, it's cool. The numbers look great here. The combined full economy, but the range is not. You're kidding me? You're telling me to go out in the desert? Sell the picture I'm showing you? In the desert. Here we are. In the desert. Driving around. Getting whoop. Oops. Sorry, honey. I don't have any more juice. Nah, man. This is... It, it just... To me, it's just mind-boggling. What's the point of this car? Explain it to me. You have 100 miles to go and come back. So, uh, it, that's very little. Yeah, it's very little. That's way too low. It's 222. You're not going to get 22 because at some point you get to put down a little bit. I mean, I just showed you a picture of the guy spinning his wheels. Trying to go up on that dirt. You're not going to get 200 miles doing this. You're not going to get that. It's just not going to happen at all. Okay? You're doing this. You're not going to get that 200 miles. You're going to get a little bit less because you're putting more work. So... Can you explain to me? I know that's one of my videos where I'm not being like all cheery and happy because seriously, I just feel like this is... How did this escape the production team when I'm making it the engineers and get to that table? I don't know. I'm pretty sure they know what they're doing and they're looking at a segment and saying it's going to fit in there. That's why they're saying only making 7,500 of it, but... No. Um, these engines are... Um, I don't want to use harsh words, but they're... 
Let's put it this way. In 2022, they're not acceptable. That's not acceptable. Permanent magnet, synchronous AC, 107 horse. That's the joke. That What is this? Like, they got this from a shaver? I mean, I don't know. Uh, onboard motor, some yacht. I mean, I, I, I mean, everything has more power than this. This is just not acceptable. And it's two motors. When I saw dual motor, I'm like, ooh, dual motor. Now you start to appreciate more like what Tesla does, right? When you appreciate more when you see other companies, Porsche, Mercedes. This would never get out of Mercedes. Mercedes would never make something like this. 222 again oh my god i'm gonna i'm pretty sure someone's gonna right now go in the comments and say mercedes made something worse and okay again we're not trying to compare bad to bad but i don't know you can tell i'm kind of upset because i was looking forward to it and i just feel like this is just not happening dude this is just, oh, if you're buying a car and you're looking at this please don't buy it please okay let me let me take a sip from my buy a munich mug mm, that fuzzy drink that's a it's a coke zero whatever um but yeah uh if you're buying a car and you're gonna get it at at this range i i say stay away not acceptable uh again if you live in a city and a bustling city and you have access to the charger go ahead if you live in a small but i mean i'm talking about north america i'm talking about arizona have you seen how i just came back from texas you know how big texas is you know it's you, you know arizona is also big what you, you're i i don't know I, I don't have any words because everything looks nice the car looks nice uh the screen and all this stuff but dude we can't go anywhere and we have no power that's i mean i i understood the range if you tell me i have 300 you know for pound of four 400 i mean Electric motor, you can make a lot of power. What? Are, and this is dual motor. Okay, so I'm beating a dead horse. Anyway, so having said that, okay, moving on, moving on. So they're only making 6500 So, okay, and the crowd, the cost is going to be about $40,000 estimated. Yeah, so um, anyway, let me know uh, if you think this is a great car and you love it. Good. Um, but again, level 2 charger, level 1 charger, claim 56 minutes. They get that 80%. Even here, they mention if your campsite is more than 100 miles away, maybe take the Forester. They they even like kind of hinted to it here. So, yeah, I, I think it's one of those. Uh, I guess Toyota's making it, and then they told Subaru, "Hey, Subaru, yeah, put that little diff in the back." And I guarantee you, this all-wheel drive is not the same up to scratch. Like you know, I keep mentioning my Evo or like a real all-wheel drive vehicle. Uh, but Subaru usually have full-time all-wheel drive, so they have a they have a diff in the in the back. And I don't know how they're doing the front diff. I, I I need to look underneath it. But here's the problem. They don't show you these details. You know, you see all these photos and none of them are technical photos. They're more photos of a guy driving and being happy, which is fine. Uh, anyways, um, this has been kind of like my review of this car. Again, I feel like, you know, I've been too much of my opinion, but uh, trust on this, dude. I've been, I've been driving a car for a bit. And uh, I mean, I don't even need, just think about it. 200 mile range, dude. 200 miles that's that's almost and you're telling me to go out in these conditions oh by the way i mean i know um off-roading is cute and everything if you actually did real off-roading get stuck up there trust me it's not fun it, it, it happened to me it's it's um the desert environment in the middle of nowhere it's um you know you can't just call like hey can i get a tow service here please no you better be with your mates and someone gonna get you out and anyway so it's uh, you being stuck out there is not a lot of fun so yeah you definitely want to find your way back but if you're driving in the city and you're not bothered by the the range uh see look even i mentioned it doesn't have a 300 mile range or 500 horsepower anyway so um if you're driving in the city it could work for you if you have access power charger all you're doing you, your commute is 12 miles 50, 50 miles a day then there should absolutely be no issue to you and you should be able to have fun with it again this is only for people who are trying to take it out there for what they're advertising it to be right you know because obviously this is this is the company taking um uh, taking this journalist to go out there in the desert and you know show you hey off-road vehicle so um if you're just gonna be driving in the city you shouldn't have any issues and the fact is toyota subaru it shouldn't it shouldn't it's not gonna break down on you or anything i think the only thing that's gonna happen is just gonna run out of juice this is a good company they know how to build cars so um anyways uh yeah so uh Anyway, let me know what you think. If you agree with me or not, let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. And uh, have a good day wherever you are in the world. And uh, 
Uh, thank you for watching again. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>